well. I grew up in Durban. My father was a publisher, publishing mainly legal texts and, and medical textbooks. And I did work um, at the company in the holidays and um, uh, <coughs> after school for some years. So I was quite familiar with the, the concept of the law. But when I wanted to go and study, I persuaded my parents that I, I needed to go very far away to Stellenbosch University to study music. My mother is a musician. And I, regist I was about to register for music studies when I saw the line next to me was full of boys. And the line that I was in consisted only of girls. So I quickly switched lines. And I registered for law instead. So I did a law degree. I prosecuted for a while. I then joined the Faculty of Law at the University of Stellenbosch, then UCT, and then I decided to take a break from academia to raise my then two children. But I was still teaching part-time at UWC. And then on the 27th of April, 1994, which was a very significant date in South Africa's history, I got a phone call from Professor Nico Stafer asking me to please join what was then called the Community Law Center to run the Children's Rights Project because all of the members of staff of the Community Law Center had been made ministers in the Mandela cabinet, the first cabinet, including the then leader of the Women's Rights Project, Bridget Mbandla, who subsequently became minister of um, science and technology. So my response to, to, to Professor Stapler was that I will come and do this because it sounded really interesting. I had no idea what children's rights were, absolutely no idea. But I said I first had to have, to have to have a baby next week and then I'll come the week after. So that's what happened. I had my third baby and a week after that I joined the Community Law Centre to manage the Children's Rights Project, which was extensively funded at the time by donor organizations who were supporting the, the anti-apartheid movement, which included children's rights. I learned what children's rights were pretty quickly. Um, it was a baptism of fire, and it became my life motif for the rest of my academic career. That's what, that is my signature, my interest, my um, <coughs> academic signature, as it were. When I started teaching a master's course in children's rights two years later, I still teach it, I taught last night, um, I teach in an advanced master's program at the University of Leiden that we set up in 2013. I've been there for eight years. Um, it attracts students from all over the world. It's the only master's program in children's rights in the world that's in, on international children's rights. So it's not on any particular legal system, it's on the international scenario. <coughs> and um, I couldn't have chosen a more exciting academic path to pursue if I had selected it myself, because it is a field that has grown. The Convention on the Rights of the Child was adopted in 1990, so I was in on the ground floor, as it were, four years later, and it is now a huge enterprise that covers everything from children's rights and digital technology, children on the internet, children on Google, children's privacy, children and sexual predators, to children and climate change. Children claiming their rights for the future that adults are destroying because of climate change. Those are just two recent examples, but it, it is really a very exciting field to be in because it covers all aspects of human endeavor. And um, <coughs> I was very fortunate that very early on at the Community Law Center that was uh, initially headed by Advocate Bella Omar, um, who approached me and appointed me to a project committee of the South African Law Reform Commission to draft a new statute on juvenile justice, which I, which I was part of a school committee that did so. So that became another field of speciality for me. And then I conceived the idea that we needed a new Children's Act 
to meet the needs of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And together with the then Portfolio Committee on um, what was then called Welfare, we persuaded the Minister of Welfare to appoint a project committee to draft the new Children's Act. And if you'll give me one second, I'll just um, show you the product of our endeavours. So the product of our endeavours was the Children's Act of 2005, which covers everything from parental responsibilities and rights to surrogate motherhood, to foster care, to child and youth care centres. And I was in 2007 awarded the contract to draft the regulations. So this is actually the most comprehensive piece of legislation that we have on our statute book of anything. And I will tell you exactly how many pages it is. 704 pages. So, <laughs> and the Children's Act is actually currently being amended in Parliament. There's various errors and there's various problems that have crept in, plus the efflux of time has needed certain changes. <coughs> so it's an ongoing work in progress, but um, I'm very proud of it. I've also drafted, I was privileged to be part of a UNICEF project for Eastern and Southern Africa, UNICEF Isaro. Um, so I was part of law reform projects in Mozambique, Botswana, Kenya, Lesotho, Namibia, um, South Sudan, uh, Malawi, all over Africa. Which I'm also very proud of, and I'm, I remain um, very committed to law reform in those countries. I've just recently drafted the new juvenile justice legislation for Zimbabwe, which went through cabinet about three weeks ago. <laughs> and all of these legislative proposals involve consultation and meeting with the role players. Um, I did a couple of workshops in Zimbabwe with people. And then, um, yeah, I, um, I've continued to supervise students, for which I am immensely proud. Um, one of my ex-students is now Deputy Dean, another is Dean at UCT, um, another one is Dean at Makerere in Uganda, and I have students in judicial positions, um, in lecturing positions, in prominent positions in um, in uh, law firms and in public office. So I think I've made my contribution to a whole generation of probably more than a hundred post-grad students that have had to suffer through my horrible comments on their dreadful proposals and uh, pieces of writing. <laughs> well, it's difficult. I mean, that's that comes from the other side. I, I, that's what I do. So I don't know that it's different from anybody for anybody else. But I, I do. I do try and treat all my students in the same way. I have, I have recently, in the last five years, for the first time, fired a couple of students who were making no progress or were not listening to me and not putting in the, the effort to make the changes that I propose, and then I just feel it's a pointless exercise. But for the most part, that's only in the last five years, and I think it's only two or three students, but for the most part, students have really benefited, I think, from the interaction that I've had <laughs> with them. And... Um, I'm, I'm pleased about that. Um, well, for me the shift was very difficult because I'm not very good on, on, on technological things, but I had my daughter here for the first eight months until she absconded to the UK. So I had my in-house IT, support, IT supporter to come and tell me how stupid I was being. And then I also had a colleague who, um, who I asked if he would help mentor me, and he, he did. I'm very grateful to him, Professor Radley Henrique. And I actually had two friends come round, two friends' colleagues come round, 
and we did online tutorials with him. This was Professor Debbie Hamlin and Professor Patricia Lenan. We sat here for a whole morning and he did online tutorials with us to help us, and that was very helpful. And he's been helpful subsequently too um, <coughs> in helping me um, share screens and get my PowerPoints reduced and so on and so forth. But um, it's it's been very, very difficult. I've also found that the, I can't remember what the acronym stands for, but the Center for uh, CIECT. No, 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 the center, the center that does the IT stuff. The, yes, that um, the staff there have been, been quite helpful as well. But apart from that, you, <laughs> you're literally on your own. You're literally on your own. And, and it's not just DWC, the same applies to my teaching at the University of Leiden. I, I've been a, I was appointed there on a part-time basis in 2013, and we established this wonderful master's course. I've graduated some absolutely fabulous students. In fact, I graduated two on the 26th of August, and they both had excellent theses, and the one was class valedictorian and the highest thesis score and the best written thesis in English that I've ever written, and he, and he is Spanish. Wow. He's from Chile. <laughs> yes, it was flawless. <laughs> flawless. I couldn't find anything to edit, even though I'm a compulsive editor. Um, but um, it was the same from the University of Leiden. I mean, everybody is on their own. You, you just have to just find a way. Well, that's what we did, um, both at, the, at UWC and in, in Leiden, is we got guest speakers, um, time zones obviously um, had to be accommodated, but also time zones for the students. In Leiden, we had students sitting in Mexico and in China. So when do you, when do you teach? What time of the day? And, and if you've got a guest lecturer who's sitting in, for argument's sake, Zurich, what do you do then? So we, you have to think quite carefully about accommodating all of that, but it does expose the students to a far broader array of expertise. And we found people uh, in really high up places, really, really high up places, remarkably willing to come and give an hour of their time. Because that's the other thing about the um, online environment, is that which we were taught, we learned very early on, is you've got to limit the time. You cannot have people sitting glued to their screens for two and a half, three hours. They just won't sit there. They will go away. So you have to be concise. You have to be to the point, And you have to limit the time to 45 minutes to an hour, which is what we now do. And I don't think that, it, that you sacrifice depth and um, complexity by being conci concise and, and um, limiting the time at all. <coughs> 